everybody, I am coming at you today with a special edition video and I am calling this Finishing School with Sweetwater Stitcher. In today's video, I am going to be showing how to decoupage a backing piece with fabric. And the wood piece that I'm going to be decoupaging onto is one of the square pieces from 141 Design Company. And I've already painted the back side of it black. You can paint the back, you can leave it um, just with the wood how it comes. This side of the piece, which I was originally going to be using as the backing, um, it has a little bit of a sheen. I did spray this with the deft clear coat. So that's another option if you had painted the front and then you wanted to clear coat the back. Um, but for this purpose, I already had one that was painted black and I'm gonna use that as the backing portion and then I'm going to decoupage on the wood piece. So what you'll need is um, a backer. It can be wood. Um, I haven't used any other materials, but I'm sure you could use other materials. Um, but that's one of the purposes of the wood pieces that are by 141 Design Company. So you need your piece of wood, you need a piece of fabric, and I'm going to be using um, this green Chelsea's check. And I'm going to be showing you how to decoupage the piece with this. And then I have one in the yellow all ready to cut around the edges to show you, and that's what I'll be mounting my honey delivery on. So I'm going to add a few things about um, mounting your piece and adding um, a bow and some embellishment on there. Um, you also need Mod Podge, and I just use the gloss Mod Podge. I have a big thing from Hobby Lobby. And you also need a, um, I like to use the foam brushes. You can use um, a paintbrush, really anything to get the Mod Podge onto the wood. Um, that's the main goal. And then I'm gonna actually use the rotary cutter today because I have just square edges, but I also used this technique on the back of um, my beehive that I had, and I used a precision blade when I did that, which is an X-Acto knife, um, in order to cut in to the, um, the edges of the beehive. So you can either use the um, X-Acto knife or you can use a rotary cutter. And that's all you need for the decoupage part. So the first step is to take your Mod Podge and another thing, which I have not done this, but you can do this, is if you wanted the fabric to come out very bright, you can pre-paint your wood with a white paint um, and then that would give you a white background uh, since for the purpose of today and I have not done this yet I'm just going to leave it wood so when it does dry it's not going to dull the fabric but it is not as um, bright I find as it is when you just set it down like this so depending if that matters to you that's an extra step um, you would take then you can go ahead and do that. Another tip I have is the piece of fabric that you're gonna be decoupaging down. I would, after you cut it, which I'll show you in a second how I cut my fabric piece, I would iron it because when you have it laid down and you're using the Mod Podge, you are smoothing it out. But if you have any lines in your fabric from where it was folded, it's sometimes after the decoupage dries the Mod Podge, um, you can see them. Most of the time it's going to be behind your stitching or there's gonna be other things going on. So it's not that big of a deal, but if that's gonna bother you, I would um, iron your piece of fabric. So to cut the fabric to size, you're just going to lay your big piece of fabric down and I've already pre-cut mine and lay your wood on it. And you're just gonna cut a piece of fabric that's a little bit 
um, larger on each side than your wood piece. I could have even made this a little bit smaller. You just want it to hang over the edge a little bit. Um, this was a leftover piece I had already cut from um, when I did my pillow finish because I used the same fabric actually. So what you're gonna do after you have your fabric, you've ironed it, you have your wood piece, is you are going to take a healthy goop of Mod Podge and you're just gonna brush it on. In my opinion, you can't have too much. So um, I would just put as much as you want on there. You can even pour some on there. Obviously, you don't want it to be in globs, but you wanna have a, a decent amount on there because this is the first part of where the fabric is going to stick to. Um, also, if you notice, I am not getting, right down here is the indentation of where the uh, wood piece sticks into the stand. So you do not want to put uh, Mod Podge down here. And that's actually where we will be lining up our fabric. So once you have a good amount of Mod Podge on your wood piece, you are going to take this up I lay my fabric down flat, and I have also cut a straight edge on my fabric um, down at the bottom because I'm going to lay my wood piece on here and I'm going to line up the bottom with the bottom of um, the indentation because I do not want any fabric down here because when I go to stick it in the um, bottom piece, the base, it's not going to stick in there. So you wanna line it up so it's right at the bottom. And if you've pre-cut it, you know that the fabric is going to be straight. And you can straighten it. You can always check, make sure, because you also wanna make sure that your, um, your gingham is straight. So once you've done that, you are going to push, um, down your fabric and you have a, a layer of Mod Podge, which is your first layer of glue. Then the next step is you're gonna take some more Mod Podge and you're going to brush it on. Again, you're trying to avoid getting Mod Podge down at the bottom portion where um, your piece is going to stick into the base. On this particular piece, if you're using a different wood piece, it wouldn't be as big of a deal um, because you're not sticking it into a base, but because I need it to be a certain size, I don't wanna cover that up. So I'm just putting, again, a decent amount, and then I'm just brushing it back and forth to make sure that it's even because you don't wanna have any clumps of this either. And I, um, in a minute, I'll show you what I do after I get a decent amount on here. Another option too is I did mention I use the Glossy Mod Podge. They also make um, matte Mod Podge and it does the same thing. It just has more of a matte look and I have not used that before, but it would do the same thing. So the next thing I do is I just take my fingers and I kind of smear it around and I wanna go in the same direction. So I'm going um, vertical, or I'm sorry, horizontally across. And then I want to make sure to push down at all of the corners because I want to make sure that it's sticking all the way to the very edge. I'm going to go here like that. Okay. And once you do that and make sure you've gone around the edges, you again want to make sure if you did use your finger um, to smear it a little bit, you want to make sure that you're, you don't have, like if you um, do your finger up and down, you don't want to have glue marks there or the Mod Podge, which is basically glue. Um, so you want to make sure that it's stuck down. If you feel like it's not, like I think I need a little more here, you can always peel it back there and stick a little more down and then do your fingers some more like that. Okay, 
And then you're just going to, once you've done that, you're just gonna let it dry. And let me <clears throat> wipe this off. So that's gonna dry once it's completely dry, which it doesn't take that long. Um, then you can move to the next step, which is cutting away the excess um, fabric. So let me grab my other piece. Sorry if I'm wiggling the camera. Let me move this over here. Okay. So I already have my wood piece um, with, oops, my yellow Chelsea's checks. So if I was, again, like I said, if I was using or making the beehive or another object that had um, indentations, which I still, I probably will use it for um, the edges here, is you will you want to use an exacto knife otherwise i um, found you could use a rotary cutter so i've already started cutting right here and all i did was i just cut right along the edge so i'm going to do the same here and it just comes off in a nice straight line and then i'm going to cut this one I accidentally forgot to leave off um, the bottom portion, so I will show um, you how I do that. For the um, edge right here, I'm going to just cut here and cut here, and the piece will just come off. And if it's not coming, then just cut one more time and again. And if you have a cutting mat, um, whether you are a quilter or if you're just a cross stitch finisher and you have a quilt mat, I would recommend using that. If you don't, you can just use a cardboard box. And I have used many times just the cardboard box that I get from Chantel with my order. Um, so what I am gonna do now, since I do have to cut this portion off right here, is I'm going to take my um, my ruler and I'm just going to cut across lightly, thinking the fabric. Yeah. So if you happen to forget, like I did when I was getting my sample ready, you can always cut that off. Um, very carefully. So then I have my wooden piece with my Mod Podge fabric. You can um, spray this with a deft clear coat as well, but you don't have to. And then it just fits nicely into my base like so. So I'm gonna show you how also I'm going to mount my piece, uh, my honey delivery on here. So I have my um, cross stitch and I chose to stitch it on black and I used where it had black on the chart, the wheels, I used DMC 844. I used baking tin for the bumper, which is what Priscilla used. The truck I changed to Tropical Paradise by Col Classic Color Works. And then um, I used here the 844. My leaves I changed to Jolly Holly by Classic Color Works. And then in the bees, you can see where it was black. I used the DMC 844 again. And then I changed my flowers at the top to be the Tropical Paradise. And I just wanted it to match some of my other bee things and I wanted to try something different. Because my first um, Dapper Doodad I did by them, it was on the gray and white check. So I haven't done any of them on the green yet. So I thought if I did this on the green, it wouldn't match with the one I had already done. So that's why I chose to use um, 14 count black Ada. And this was black Ada that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. 
So I already mounted this on my sticky board and my sticky board I cut, um, this is 14 count, so I cut my um, board to mount my cross stitch piece four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I'm setting it offset because I'm going to put a, an embellishment up here. But if you wanted, you could just mount the piece right on here, just like this, and you'd be all finished. You could also, with the yellow gingham on the back, you could mount um, another piece of board with a different color to have a double mat. But I'm going to just have one. I'm going to glue it right there. And then I'm going to glue my bow up here at the top, just like that. So let me get my glue gun and hold on one second. All right, the next step is to glue down my piece. So I'm going to put my glue on the back. And place my piece down here. And I know I want it to go down at the bottom because I laid out my bow already. If you know you want to add an embellishment, you might want to um, have that ready so you know where to put your piece, your cross stitch piece on your backer. Um, if you don't know what you want to do, then you can place your cross stitch piece first and then add your embellishment around. I knew I wanted to add this bow, so I went ahead and made it first so I would know where to put my piece. And how I did this is I have um, this, I don't even know what you would call it. To me, it kind of looks almost like a honeycomb um, ribbon from Michaels with also this um, just plain jute ribbon is from Michaels. Uh, natural color and then these honey dippers and I have them wrapped in twine and each I um, put the two back bows tied them together with twine and then I created this piece and glued it on and I will also have an upcoming tutorial on making bows um, single bows double bows adding embellishments um, and I'm working on getting that together as well so once I have my whole bow glued together, I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of that and then place it where I would like it. And sometimes when I'm creating the bows, um, and I'll go into a lot more detail about this in the bow tutorial, sometimes I do the bow first and then I decide what I wanna put um, in the middle after, so I'll glue the bow down and then I'll glue the embellishment after. But I used the same bow and embellishment on another finishing piece and I really liked it, so I knew that I wanted to put it on here as well. So once you've done that, you can check and see, do you wanna trim your ribbon some more or are you good with how it looks? And I like how it looks. So then the next and last step is just to stick your wooden piece inside of your um, base and you can either glue it in or if you don't want to glue it um, it stays standing up straight like that so you can always just leave it in there and then if you want to take it out to store it flat you can do that as well or if you would like to glue you can put a little bit of glue on here um, and stick it in or you can glue a little bit at the bottom um, and then just kind of sand it down depending on how you want to finish it. And then this is what my back looks like and it's ready to be displayed in either a tear tray, um, which these fit in tear trays, or you could stick it on a shelf um, or in another type of a display. So I hope you enjoyed the decoupage tutorial today and I hope that you will join me um, for some more finishing school tutorials in my series coming soon. Have a great day. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.